Hi, everybody. Welcome again to Ivy English. I'm Bruce. I'm Angela. And I'm Wesley. Today we have for you something about,、uh, let's call it a little bit of art and a little bit of、uh, medicine. It's called Stendhal Syndrome, the Power of Art. 中文标题是佛罗伦斯限定斯汤达症候群 Okay,、uh, brace yourselves as I begin to read the three paragraphs, which we will then go over sentence by sentence. Art occurs in many forms: music, dance, painting, architecture, sculpture, cinema, and literature, among others. Works of art can make people feel moved, even to the point of tears. In the case of Stendhal's syndrome, however. This feeling is so intense that a person can experience a rapid heartbeat, dizziness, sweating, hallucinations, or fainting. It may even require hospitalization. In the Italian city of Florence, numerous visitors viewing the abundant Renaissance art there have experienced this and have required medical attention. Though not professionally recognized, this condition, now referred to as Stendhal syndrome, does exist. While great art is found in every civilization, Florence has been especially blessed. A small city with a compact historical center, it is internationally esteemed for its astounding concentration of Renaissance art. Florence. In the 15th and 16th centuries, was a magnet for the talent of many geniuses, artists, scientists, and authors were welcomed here. Some of the greatest Western works of art can be found in Florence, such as the Statue of David by Michelangelo, the Birth of Venus by Botticelli, and the frescoes by Giotto in the Basilica of Santa Croce. In addition, Leonardo da Vinci left works here. Galileo Galilei and Niccolo Machiavelli are buried here. Florence was a lighthouse of culture and enlightenment in a Europe still recovering from the Middle Ages. The syndrome is named after Stendhal, a French author who visited Florence in 1817. He described his experience of being. Overwhelmed by the historic and artistic power of the city, in one of his books, though the term Stendhal syndrome was not coined until 1979 by Italian psychiatrist Graziella Magarini, the illness had already had a long history. Patients usually recover within days of their attacks without any treatment, other than rest and quiet. For them, the cost of viewing the power and beauty of Florence is a brief trip to a hospital. So, art occurs in many forms: music, dance, painting, architecture, sculpture, cinema, and literature, among others. Honestly, the the longer I am an artist, the longer the more I believe that basically your life is a work of art. How you progress through your life is you expressing yourself upon the world, which is art. 好，所以呢，这个地方他一开始讲 art occurs 啊，这个 occurs 本来是 happens 的意思啊，但在这里也有一点那种 exists 那种感觉哈、啊，就是艺术它会发生，用很多形式来发生，或者它用很多呃这个形式来存在啊。那包括艺术，你可以发现这个音乐当然是艺术，舞蹈也是艺术，绘画也是艺术，好、啊、，architecture 建筑也是艺术啊，那雕刻也是艺术 ，cinema。也是电影，也是艺术。那 literature 当然也是艺术。好 ，among others 就是还有其他各式各样的艺术。好，那这个 Angel 讲说啊，这个呃他自己也是个艺术家，他觉得这个其实生活就是个艺术啊。你你生活的方式其实就是一种你表达自己的一个方式，所以也是一种艺术。Works of art can make people feel moved, even to the point of tears. Now, this is a really important point. I hear many, many students say, "Oh, I have a lot of homeworks to do,、mm -hmm. or、uh, houseworks." Works is only plural when it refers to art. Otherwise, work is used in the singular. I have a lot of work to do today, so I better get started. 
so art can make people feel moved. This it doesn't mean you change where you live. It means uh, you become very sensitive and emotional about something if you are moved, even to the point of even including crying or weeping. Uh, works. 它加 s 的时候，通常是表示作品的意思啊，所以通常跟艺术跟文学有关啊。那要注意，如果只是工作或者是你功课，这个都是 work 啊，那不加 s 的。好，所以 works of art 就是艺术品。那它可以让人们 feel 感觉到 moved 啊，会感动啊。Move 在这里就是 stir up an emotion in somebody 的意思啊，所以它会让你心里面有情绪啊，感动。那那 even to the point of tears 啊。To the point of tears, 就是甚至到到你流泪的程度啊，叫做 even to the point of tears. 所以你看看欣赏艺术，你会觉得感动，甚至于会感动的会流泪啊。我想电影这个，我大家就很容易想象，或者是小说、电影啊，你看的就会觉得哇，这个感动到流泪。Now, in the case of Stendhal syndrome, however, this feeling is so intense that a person can experience a rapid heartbeat, dizziness, sweating, hallucinations. Or fainting, they are literally overcome by the feeling. 好，那但是呢，在这个 Stanhope syndrome 啊，这个症候群呢的情况里面呢 ，this feeling 就是你看到艺术然后得到感动的这种感觉呢 ，is so intense. Intense 在就是 strong 的意思啊 ，strong feeling, intense feeling 啊，你感受非常的强烈，强烈到什么程度呢？强烈到 a person 啊。人呢可以 experience， 你可能会经历啊，会有那种感受啊，你会有什么感受呢？你会经历到心跳加快 ，a rapid heartbeat 啊，然后呢 dizziness， 你会晕眩 ，sweating， 你会流汗啊 ，hallucinations 就是你会有幻觉啊，产生幻觉，或者是 fainting 啊，你会昏厥。那这个句子各位其实要特别注意一下，就是这个句子中文跟英文啊，这典型的差异啊，中文的说法可能是说这个呃感觉会强烈到。一个人可能会心跳加速，各位，我们都是用动词，他会心跳加速啊，会晕眩，会流汗，会有幻觉啊，会这个甚至于会昏昏厥啊。可是各位看到英文的话呢，他不是说啊，呃 ，so intense that a person 啊 can beat his heart rapidly 啊 ，can 什么呃，这个 become dizzy 啊，这个都不用动词，英文直接就 ex, 加了一个动词 experience， 他会经历到。然后底下全部都是名词啊 ，rapid heartbeat 啊 ，dizziness、sweating 啊 ，hallucination， 它都是用名词，所以会经历到这些东西啊。那英文的就一个动词解决掉。那中文的话呢，因为允许多动词，所以中文会说这个人他会心跳加速啊，或会晕眩啊，会怎么怎么，都是用动词。所以中文偏向多用动词，英文偏向多用名词。啊，因为英文的动词是真的会动的，所以一个英文句子里面如果动词太多的话，会让人家觉得第一个文法不对，第二个这个会让人家觉得这个句子一直在动，好像不稳定那种感觉啊。所以一个动词定下来 ，experience， 那后面中文会用动词的，英文通通都用名词啊。所以这个句子大家可以好好的去体会一下，这是中文跟英文的一个重要差距。你了解掌握这一点之后，你写出来英文就会比较像英文啊，因为很多人会觉得啊，你写出来英文句子文法没有错啊，可是怎么？读起来就不像英文，这可能是原因之一啊！你用的和文法的结构，你用了很多动词，虽然文法对，但是呢，这个在英文的概念来讲，其实一个句子动词太多，它是感觉是不是那么稳定的 ？It may even require hospitalization. It, of course, refers to the Stendhal syndrome. In the worst cases,、uh, people may collapse and have to be sent to the hospital. 这句话也很有趣啊。我们先看他的意思，他这个他说 ，it may it may even 甚至于 require 需要这个 hospitalization 需要这个去住院。那这个地方各位中文会怎么讲呢？中文也是一样啊，甚至可能需要住院啊，需要去住院啊，感觉起来都是动词。但是英文呢，需要 require 动词定了之后，后面就住院就变成名词的形式了哈、啊、，hospitalization。Now, in the Italian city of Florence, I don't know if you've been, but Florence is kind of amazing, and numerous visitors who go to view the abundant, abundant. There's just more than abundant. It's everywhere. Renaissance art there. They have experienced this, this sort of overwhelm of what you can see and do, and many visitors have been overwhelmed to the point of requiring medical attention. So I just think it's interesting. Florence has been. The center of rich people in Italy for a very long time, and they all invested heavily in the arts because that's how 
at the time when you were rich, you displayed your wealth to other people. You're like, look at all the art I've got. I've got more art than you. So Florence is full, chock full of art. And so I imagine the hospitals in Florence have to deal with this Stendhal syndrome much more than other maybe Italian cities or something. It's just kind of interesting that they're probably like, oh, another one. Or if you go to Pittsburgh. Well, you know, Pittsburgh actually has a really decent art museum in their defense. Oh. It's not as overwhelming as going to Florence, but nothing is as overwhelming as going to Florence. Florence is Florence. So this Florence is really many, many kinds of art. We've talked about that if you go to Rome, you can feel that there are many beautiful old buildings. In the United States, like Pittsburgh, it has a very beautiful art museum. But Florence is really all over the place with very beautiful art. 呃，建筑啊，或者艺术品。所以他这里讲说，在这个呃意大利这个城市 Florence 这个地方呢 ，numerous visitors 很多很多的呃来这里观光、来这里看的呃这个访问的人呢，啊、呃、不，这个 visitor 其实不是访问，其实就是来的人哈、啊。很多去那里的人呢 ，viewing 啊，这个是修饰这个 visitors， 他们看这个 abundant 就是非常丰富的 plentiful 啊。的这个 Renaissance art 啊，这个文艺复兴的艺术 ，there 就是指在这个都市，所以很多来这个都市啊，在这里看非常丰富的文艺复兴时代艺术的人啊，那他们怎么样呢 ？Have experienced 啊，所以 have experienced 它的主词是 numerous visitors， 所以很多的 visitors 他们都感受到 this 就是指刚刚前面讲的这种啊，这个呃 Stendhal syndrome。然后呢 ，and have required medical attention 啊，他们变得是需要医疗的照顾，也就是需要就医啊，所以甚至于他们这个因为太丰富、太 overwhelming 啊，看太多的这个艺术品，那他们这个呃 Stendhal syndrome 啊的强烈到他们必须要就医。Though not professionally recognized, this condition, meaning Stendhal's Stendhal's syndrome, now referred to as Stendhal syndrome. Does exist, even though many psychiatrists do not treat it as、um, an acceptable or well-known or well-documented condition like depression. Well, I think fewer people are overcome by art than are depressed in this world. <laughs> <Yeah> . Not everyone lives in Florence, eh? Good point.、Mm, yeah, so maybe because ah, now it's not been recognized because. 会得到这种艺术，看艺术品看太多，觉得很难过的这种这种人，大概是比较少一点。那我们这里看到这个句子哈 ，though 虽然 not professionally recognized， 就是没有得到专业的认可。那 this condition 啊，所以是什么东西 not professionally recognized 是 this condition 啊，所以 condition 呢，它是一种 illness 啊，或者是这种这个 medical problem 啊。例如说，我们常常讲 a heart condition 啊，就是心脏的问题啊。所以这个地方，这个还不到一个 illness 的程度啊，但是它是一个 condition。所以这种这个 Stendhal syndrome 呢，然后插入句告诉你 ，now 现在 referred to 啊，就这个情况，现在我们称之为 Stendhal syndrome。那这个状状况呢 ，does exist 啊，的确是存在的。所以这个地方其实讲的就是，你看到艺术品，你会觉得那种那个呃，会有这个晕眩呐、啊，呃，流汗呐、啊，有幻觉啊等等这些症状。这个、就是 condition， 然后呢，现在称之称这个 condition 为这个呃、uh, Stendhal syndrome。Now, while great art is found in every civilization, Florence has been especially blessed. As I mentioned, it was blessed with a number of super rich people who were competing on having the better art. 好，那伟大的艺术在每一个文明里面都找得到啊，但是佛罗伦斯呢，他特别的受到眷顾啊。这个 blessed， 它是一个宗教的。本来有宗教意思，就受到保佑、受到庇佑、受到眷顾啊。那意思就是说，到处都有很棒的艺术，但是佛罗伦斯呢，啊，他非常的受到眷顾，他有更很多很多的 great art。A small city with a compact historical center, it is internationally esteemed for its astounding concentration of Renaissance art. So this, we're not talking about Rome or Berlin or or London with millions and millions of people. It's a rather small city, actually, and it's the center of it is full of historical buildings in a very, or at least a rather small area. So yeah, it's super kind small, of dense or intense, if you like,、mm. and、uh, it is esteemed. It is praised. It is mentioned very often,、uh, having a good reputation. For this astounding, this amazing concentration of Renaissance art. 
好，所以呢，这一样，这也是一个分词构句 ，being 省略掉了啊。它是一个 small city， 一个小的城市啊。With a compact historical center 啊 ，compact 就是 pack 呃、uh, closely packed together， 就是很这个密集的啊。那它有一个很密集的，就是这个密度很高的一个 historical center， 一个具有历史性的啊这个中心啊。所以它城市并不大啊，那它的历史中心也是蛮集中的。那 it is it 就还是一样，指这个 small city， 也就是指 Florence。它是 internationally， 它是这个国际性的 esteemed， esteemed 就是 regard with respect 啊，它在国际上受到很大的很很,很这个受到敬重啊，因为它是个艺术之都啊。那接下来他这里也有讲为什么被 esteemed for 表示原因啊？为什么受到 esteemed？ 因为它有 astounding 惊人的 astonishing surprising。The concentration of Renaissance art concentration 是集中啊，因为在这么小的都市里面，有这么令人惊讶的这个文艺复兴时期艺术的集中啊 concentration， 因此它受到了这个国际的呃这个呃在国际上非常受到 esteemed。So Florence in the 15th and 16th centuries was a magnet for the talent of many geniuses. Um, we're talking about artist geniuses, scientist geniuses, and author geniuses, and sometimes these were the same person because at the time people didn't really specialize. If you were a genius, you did all of the things. And they, in this sentence, they said they were welcomed here. Do you know what's a good magnet for geniuses? Money. They were paid there. That's、yeah. why they went. Hmm. <laughs> 好，这个 magnet 就是 something that exerts attraction. 啊，像石石一样会吸引你的。那吸引什么 ？The talent 就是才华啊！什么人才？什么的什么人的才华呢？很多天才的才华啊！很多 genius 吸引这些天才他们的才华。换句话说，就是吸引这些天才来就对了啊！那其实这个 Angel 老师已经提过好几次，就是十五世纪、十六世纪的这个 Florence 这个地方，很有钱人很多。<笑>那有钱人呢，怎么样显示自己的财富？就是我有很多的艺术品，或者甚至于我可以养艺术家啊！所以艺术家会来这里，因为这个地方。啊，他们的工作会受到肯定，而且可以有相当好的收这个报酬。I rest my case. OK， <笑>、啊、这个 I I rest my case 就是好，我讲够了哈、啊，我不会再讲了啊。那其实这点很重要了，因为这个经济活动是很多事情真正的起这个诱因呐啊。然后呢，例如来的这些天才啊 ，genius 包括谁呢？包括艺术家啊、科学家啊，还有作家，他们都受到了欢迎。And now the next sentence、uh, gives us some examples of these geniuses. Some of the greatest Western works of art can be found in Florence, such as the statue of David by Michelangelo, the Birth of Venus by Botticelli, and the frescoes by Giotto in the Basilica of Santa Croce. David is a、uh, sculpture. The Birth of Venus is a painting, and frescoes are. Painted or tiled walls that、uh, make a picture. Hmm. 好，所以这个 fresco 其实是一种壁画了哈，湿壁画啊。所以呢，这个我们这里看到说啊，在某很多啊，就有一些哈、啊，这个西方最伟大的艺术品都可以在佛罗伦兹找到啊。例如说，他底下讲这个啊，米开朗基罗这个大卫的这个大卫像啊，然后这个呃，波提切利他的维纳斯的诞生。还有呢，这个圣十字大教堂里面这个乔托湿壁画啊，所以这个都是很棒的一些很重要的一些艺术品。Now, in addition, Leonardo da Vinci left works here. Galileo Galilei and Niccolo Machiavelli are work are buried here. There is a lot going on. <laughs>、yeah. We keep mentioning that. 嗯，那此外呢，啊，像这个达文西啊，他的作品就留在这里啊。然后呢，这个伽利略啊，还有这个。呃，尼可罗、马基维利，他们也被葬在这里啊，所以这真的是这个这些很有名的东人物都在这边。Uh, we mentioned earlier, Angela mentioned earlier that you weren't just a genius in one thing, but in many, and、uh, Leonardo da Vinci certainly fits that bill.、Mm. Uh, Galileo was、um, an astronomer and the、uh, first one to really come out and say that、uh, it's not the Earth that is the center of the solar system; it's the sun. Uh, and he was the first person to use a telescope、uh, to look into the heavens. And he got censured for four hundred years by the Catholic Church for his for his pains. Yeah, only、mm. a few decades ago he was exonerated、yes. of his crime. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So the Cherubier, he was the first one to use a telescope to look into the heavens. Ah, 
，那他也这个呃，但是因为他的一些天文的一些学说，他受到当局的迫害啊，所以这也是一个相当有名的一个人，但对近代科学也有很重要的影响。And Machiavelli、uh, wrote、uh, the Prince, was it?、Uh, 君王论 ，Yeah. But do you know what he was known for in his lifetime? For writing comedies. Oh, he you're wrote, kidding! No, I just learned this recently, and so then, like, imagine like <laughs> a famous comic of our time accidentally wrote a book about statecraft, and、mm. like two hundred years later, everyone's like, "Wow, that dude really understood statecraft." But at the、mm. time, he was known as a comic. Yeah, Machiavelli, ah,、uh, this he, 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 Okay, Florence was a lighthouse of culture and enlightenment in a Europe still recovering from the Middle Ages.、Uh, you might think, well, okay, quite a few big cities、uh, are cultural magnets, but you have to understand at the time. Here we write the Middle Ages, but you could also call it the Dark Ages. So Florence was like a lighthouse. It was a breath of clean, fresh air in a polluted environment, if you like. So it it makes it all the more amazing. Lighthouse 就是灯塔，所以它是个文化跟启蒙的灯塔。那在怎么样的一个欧洲呢？当时的欧洲是 still recovering from the Middle Ages。啊，当时的欧洲仍然从这个中世纪的黑暗当中慢慢的恢复。啊，所以佛罗伦斯好像一个灯，那个文化啊 ，culture 跟 enlightenment 啊 ，enlightenment 启蒙的一个灯塔。So the syndrome is named after Stendhal. The Stendhal syndrome is named after after a dude named Stendhal, and he was a French author. And he visited Florence in 1817. So Stendhal syndrome, ah, is 以谁为名呢？以 Stendhal 这个人这个为名。那这个人是个法国的作家啊。他在一八一七年到这个佛伦呃 Florence 去。He described his experience of being overwhelmed by the historic and artistic power of the city. In one of his books, he's an author, so he wrote books, and he wrote,、uh, if not a whole book, he wrote about his experience in Florence. And we've used this word many times already in this program. Overwhelmed. It seems to be too much to control or handle at one time. He describes his experience, ah, is in Florence's experience, ah, what kind of experience? Is of being overwhelmed. He's this. 呃，几乎无无法承受，整个被淹没的那种感觉啊！被什么淹没呢？被当地的历史还有艺术的力量啊 ！The historic and artistic power of the city 啊！那他在那里描述这些这些经验呢？在一他的他所写的一本书里面描述。So the term Stendhal syndrome was not coined until 1979, and it was coined by this person to coin something is to to make up the name. So this. Italian psychiatrist Graziella Magherini is the one who started calling it Stendhal syndrome. But、um, even though she was the one to to identify it with a name, the illness had already had a long history. They'd already been Florence hospitals have been dealing with this a long time. <laughs> yeah, so even though this word Stendhal syndrome, this word, 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 他是由在一九七九年由意大利的一个心理学家啊，他所创造的。那虽然是这样，但是这样的一个疾病呢，老早啊就已经发现了，所以他有一个已经有很长的历史了哈。但最近一九七九年才有名字出来啊。所以 the illness had already had a long history. Patients usually recover within days of their attacks without any treatment, other than rest and quiet. So this this is not a disease or an illness that causes a lot of pain and you need surgery. No, it's just a syndrome. It's just a set of symptoms that happen. Right. 好，所以 attack 本来是攻击，好，那在这里就是感染啊，被感染到这个疾病，得到这个疾病，哈啊，或者这个症症候群，它不是个疾病，它是症候群啊。所以这个得到这个症候群的人呢，通常会 recover 会复原 within days of their attacks. 就是开始有症状之后，几天之内他就会恢复了。那 without any treatment， 不需要任何的治疗。Other than 除了什么之外，不需要任何的治疗，除了 rest and quiet， 就是安静休息啊，就是休息静养 ，rest and quiet， 安安静静的休息几天就好了，不需要真正的什么治疗。For them, the cost of viewing the power and beauty of Florence is a brief trip to the hospital. 
。好，对他们来讲呢，去欣赏到佛罗伦斯的力量啊，还有它的美的代价 cost 是怎么样？就是 a brief trip to a hospital， 就是去这个医院啊，短短的去一趟，去等于说就是去。So we have some questions here for you. Number one of which is, which of the following topics is not mentioned in the passage? 好，本文没有提到底下哪一个主题呢 ？The answer is D, a description of modern art in Florence. That's because it basically doesn't really exist. I mean, there's modern art and there's Florence, and they're not together. 答案是 D， 好，佛罗伦斯现代艺术的描述。Number two, what does the phrase "not professionally recognized" in the first paragraph most nearly mean? 第一段的这个 "not professionally recognized" 它最接近的意思是什么呢 ？The answer is that it's a not officially accepted. So most doctors are like, "Ah,、oh, it's not really a thing." Okay. 答案是 A. 好，它还没有被正式的接受。Number three, which of the following descriptions of Florence in the Renaissance is the most accurate? 对于文艺复兴时期佛罗伦斯的叙述，哪一个最精准呢 ？The answer is B. It was a center for enlightened thought and works. 答案是 B. 啊，它是开明思想跟作品的中心。And number four, which of the following is true about Stendhal syndrome according to the passage? 根据本文啊，下列哪一项是关于这个 Stendhal syndrome 的正叙述啊是正确的？ The answer is B. Though it exists, it is a thing. It is rarely very harmful. 答案是 B. 啊，虽然它存在，但很少真正有什么害处。Well, that's it for today's program. We'll be back, but not until next month. So try and hang on till then. Which is only a few days from now. <laughs> <laughs>